हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम यू ऑल टू शून्य आई एस एंड वेलकम बैक टू टॉप फिफ्टी रैपिड करेंट अफेयर स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द मंथ ऑफ मे द प्रोग्राम इज अबाउट स्टडिंग द टॉप फिफ्टी मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स फॉर ईच मंथ एंड हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू कवर इट वी आर गोइंग टू कवर इट ईच मंथ स्ट्रैटेजी ऑफ कवरिंग दैट द करेंट अफेयर विल बी कवर्ड इन फाइव डेज फिफ्टी टॉपिक्स वुड बी कवर्ड इन फाइव डेज प्रीवियस मंथ मे एंड जून हैज ऑलरेडी बीन कवर्ड you can go to the playlist on the shunya is youtube channel and there into the tfr playlist you can find the current affairs of may and june we are covering july current affairs 21st jan we covered economic development the news related to economic development from the july 22nd january polity governance and international relations 23rd january today we are going to discuss environment related important topics these are actually important topics and 24th january science and technology 25th january reports indices defense art and culture government schemes and miscellaneous topics these topics if you have very well revised you get an overview of what has happened throughout the year and will have a knack in solving the upsc current affairs questions first topic is asia pacific plant protection commission okay see plant varieties protection of plant varieties is very important uh, to the extent in the static portions you would be finding about how deforestation is uh, creating problems you will find certain initiatives of unep unfccc red red plus schemes okay so this is about protecting the plant species asia pacific by the name it is very clear that it is for the asia pacific region in the map you can see that yes india china up till australia indonesia malaysia philippines cambodia all are its members the body was established back in 1956 and yes FAO has approved this body. Recently, it is in the news because it unanimously elected India as the chair of standing committee on integrated pest management for the biennium 2023-2024. Pest management. Now you understand that because of the you know global warming, changing climate patterns, what is happening? The issue of locust attack that is originating in the Uh, west uh, west asia and from there it is traveling towards eastern direction some of them have found been found in rajasthan as well so the integrated pest management practices particularly in the whole region has to be practiced the overall objective of asia pacific plant protection Com commission is for the development of regional ek region jo hai is region ko regional plant protection systems assistance to develop effective plant protection regimes by coordinating certain policies setting standards for phytosanitary measures phytosanitary measures sanitary and phytosanitary measures important with respect to wto world trade organization that if certain plant varieties are transported from one place to another place or the produce of these plant varieties certain seeds could be transported or traded then phytosanitary measures should be followed otherwise what happens you understand maybe the plant is susceptible to certain kind of disease तो क्या होगा दिस डिजीज वुड ऑल्सो बी ट्रांसफर टू द अदर कंट्रीज एंड यू हैव हर्ड अबाउट सर्टन इन्वेजिव स्पीसीज इन टू द प्लांट लाइक लंटाना कमारा ओके वॉटर हाइसेंथ तो सर्टन इन्वेजिव स्पीसीज शुड नॉट ऑल्सो बी ट्रांसपोर्टेड विदाउट द नॉलेज ऑफ द होस्ट कंट्री सो दिस इज अबाउट प्लांट प्रोटेक्शन सिमिलर विद दैट वी विल ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंड प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ प्लांट वराइटीज एंड फार्मर्स राइट एक्ट 2001 students what happens that if you are understanding the current affairs with in a holistic manner like plant we are getting to the another news of the protection of plant varieties there are two types of protection into it okay this this act basically protects two types of varieties of the plant one is existing variety and another is new varieties new varieties you will say that what are new varieties of plants recently it is in the news the reason is that because of a case you know with delhi high court a case is there that you all would be having lays you know lays potatoes are big the chips are big therefore pepsico india holdings pepsico india holdings pepsico is the parent company of lays if you don't know you know chips khane mein maza aata hai pepsico they are made from special kind of potatoes the variety the new variety is called as fl207 2027 
जो पोटैटो की वैरायटी है दैट इज एफ एल इस वैरायटी को पेप्सिको इंडिया होल्डिंग्स ने पेटेंट करवा लिया दे सेट दैट वी वॉन्ट टू गेट इट पेटेंटेड एंड वी वुड आस्क द इंडियन फार्मर्स दैट दे कैन ग्रो दिस पोटैटोज बट विथ अ क्लॉज दैट ओनली द पेप्सिको विल बाई बैक ऑल द पोटैटोज फ्रॉम दैम बट यू नो इंडियन फार्मर्स सम ऑफ द फार्मर्स स्टार्टेड टू ग्रो इट ऑन देयर ओन and without giving it without having a contract with the pepsico so pepsico ne kaha ki it is my patent we should stop other farmers from growing it and selling it to other you know corporations this is a violation of my intellectual property right the patent so this case was there it's about mains thing that what are the clauses that yes why it should be revoked what are the reasons behind it but because of that it uh, this is in the news so देखो दो एक्ट है वन एक्ट इज प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ प्लांट वराइटीज एंड फार्मर्स राइट एक्ट 2001 यूपीएससी विल गिव यू दिस काइंड ऑफ स्टेटमेंट्स ये एग्जिस्टिंग वराइटी एंड न्यू वराइटीज दोनों को प्रोटेक्ट करते हैं फार्मर राइट्स को भी प्रोटेक्ट करते हैं इट आल्सो प्रोटेक्ट्स फार्मर्स राइट्स बट यू विल हैव अनदर एक्ट दिस एक्ट एक्चुअली कन्फर्म्स विद द इंटरनेशनल यूनियन फॉर प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ न्यू वराइटीज ऑफ प्लांट्स नाइनटीन सेवेंटी में हम, हमने बनाया था एक्ट न्यू वराइटीज को प्रोटेक्ट करने के लिए This act only protects new varieties. Okay. PPVFR is the world's only IPR legislation that grants intellectual property rights not only to the plant breeders for generating new varieties, but also to the farmers by protecting new extant and farmers varieties. Unlike the this act, UPOV, the act facilitates the protection of not only new but even existing varieties. the case was in the news as you have heard it okay pepsico india holdings uh, against the you know revoking the registration of their patent so what we have understood important point is farmers rights are protected intellectual property rights of corporations are also protected existing and new varieties are protected in the basics if you, if you will understand you will get to the correct answer so access to seeds accessibility of farmers for the seeds monsanto case would also come here monsanto case bt cotton you know Sea grasses, sea grasses are called as ecosystem engineers. You understand right now the most important talk of the town. What FAO is also talking is blue economy. It is talking about blue economy, the terrestrial ecosystem we want to protect. But along with that, our focus is shifting towards ocean. Sea grasses, students. Just by as soon as I say sea grasses, which animal do you recall? tell me in the comment box which animal which mammal do you recall in the ocean it is dugong dugong is called as sea cow it only feeds on sea grasses sea cow it only feeds on sea grasses what is the iucn status of dugong tell me in the chat box what is the iucn of dugong okay now about sea grasses why it is called as ecosystem engineers let's understand just like normal grass apomixis the process of reproduction is called as apomixis sea grasses reproduce through both sexual and asexual methods okay it occurs all along the coastal areas of india actually across all the continents it it occurs one exception is there okay india and the abundance in the palk strait gulf of mannar in tamil nadu they are found all across the co continents except antarctica except antarctica because you know Uh, the temperature does not favor that this grass could be grown over here and when we are talking about arctic region arctic region is just ice you know below that you will find it is the ocean ice it is the landmarks mass antarctica <coughs> this is the reason we have also understood that why polar amplification polar amplification the effect is more pronounced in arctic region in comparison to antarctic region because it has land mass therefore the polar amplification or in other words we say it as arctic amplification because of global warming is more pronounced in the arctic region okay they are basically flowering plants grow submerged in the shallow marine waters like bays and lagoons and you understand as soon as the sea sea level would increase sea grasses how we can harness the sea grasses related with the gihas accorded by the fao the kutnad underwater farming in the keralas so these are going to to be Uh, providing the future agricultural and ensuring the food security as well they have roots stems leaves and produce flowers and seeds 
proper flowering they inhabit all types of substrates layers from mud to the rock they are found in extensively in muddy and sandy substrates so this is uh, what you understand sea grasses okay algae also this is also food of the future spirulina okay high in nutrient status of tigers co predators and prey in india 2022 report has come by the ntca national tiger conservation authority see this is about management effectiveness evaluation of tiger reserves in india fifth cycle fifth cycle the ntca what kind of body it is statutory non statutory this is a statutory body ntca formed by the wildlife protection act okay 1972 okay so this basically conducts this management effectiveness cycle along with that how do we understand the effective management cats cats m stripes the question has already been asked the stripes on the tiger are unique pug mark technique so what management effectiveness and evaluation they have basically they have assessed on the basis of camera trap based capture mark recapture by extracting dna from the scats by extracting dna from the scats we have understood we have given account on the number of tigers what had been their practices states with the highest tiger numbers some facts important for the exam examination states with highest number of tigers madhya pradesh followed by karnataka mp is also called as tiger state of india followed by karnataka not much difference then uttarakhand maharashtra and tamil nadu reserve with highest tiger population reserves with highest tiger population here on the basis of total tigers in a state we have talked jim corbett in uttarakhand a very beautiful place bandipur in karnataka then nagar hole karnataka bandhavgarh mp where white tigers are also found dudwa up okay states with lowest number of tigers nagaland 0 mizoram 0 Jharkhand one, Goa five, and Arunachal nine. Reserve with no tigers, Dampa. Where Dampa is located, Mizoram. In the state of Mizoram, Dampa Tiger Reserve is there. Okay, fifty four. Basically, right now we have by twenty twenty two we had fifty uh, three. Right now we have fifty four tiger reserves. Okay. Cover two point three percent of India's total land area because this report has come now, but this report depicts twenty twenty two data collection. Biological diversity amendment bill twenty twenty three. Biological diversity amendment bill. Actually, this topic needs to be dealt in detail. From here, a question is definitely expected in the examination. Biological diversity amendment bill. Okay, but for now, you need to understand few things about biological diversity. this act previously called as uh, biological diversity act 20 2002 okay this originated to fulfill the obligations under convention of biological diversity 1992 the rio earth summit from where unfccc okay unccd and cbd convention on biological diversity occurred and under which we have nagoya protocol cartagena protocol okay nagoya protocol on access and benefit sharing with prior informed consent so here the changes have been done okay the changes have been done what are the priorities what are the priorities first of all you will understand that exemption for the use of local people and communities exemption for the use of local people the local people's rights over their resources have not been adequately represented in the amended act basically it has been passed the bill has been passed by the lok sabha recently very recently the bill has been passed by the lok sabha this bill was initiated back in 2021 so it will be an act right now okay so prior intimation has to be done and other issues that are with the biological diversity amendment act is that first of all if the issue in 20, uh, 2002 was there it was dealt with a judge now if any issue arises then the issue will be dealt by a government official steed of a judge who is having an expertise a government official a government official 
many of the provisions of the 2002 act which were criminal in the nature have been decriminalized which would we can call it a good step and many of the uh, you know offenses uh, where the imprisonment was there we have converted it into fines okay penalties and fines penalties and fines have been increased from 1 lakh to 50 lakh rupees and decriminalization of certain offenses have been done biodiversity beyond national jurisdiction treaty okay this is this is extremely important students this is extremely important one ocean summit in the one ocean summit it was launched basically okay previous year uh, biodiversity beyond national jurisdiction by the unclos this is also called as treaty of high seas treaty of high seas see from where the high seas actually start okay this is the territorial area land you will find that and for any country for any country this is the exclusive economic zone up to 200 nautical miles up to 200 nautical miles we have exclusive economic zone the ocean waters belong to that particular country what about the high seas how do we protect the biodiversity the ocean health in the high seas for that now we have a treaty proper treaty and this is a legally binding treaties under the ages of unclos india is party to it it is legally binding remember this and this is going to protect 30 percent of the seas into protected areas by 2030 so we will find certain patches in the high seas uh, in the ocean and we will try to have a conservation activity over there high ambition coalition ensure that new global frame framework to protect the earth's natural systems plants animals be adopted at cop 15 okay at cop 15 okay then let's look at another topic global biodiversity framework fund global biodiversity framework fund this fund has a provision from the global environment facility global environment facility question has been asked by upsc okay the trustee is world bank it was formed 1992 again back to rio earth summit 1992 it was formed it has launched global biodiversity frame framework fund to support this coming montreal global biodiversity framework coming global biodiversity framework students this this is a place in china basically this is a place in china coming montreal global biodiversity framework. this is a very holistic program this is a very holistic program which has 23 targets four goals under the four goals we have to achieve these 23 targets it can be subdivided but just understand what is the approach approach is about the whole of the society's approach towards restoring nature just like one health approach one water approach we had okay across the sections of the uh, water gray water storm water drinking water we have to treat all the water like same similarly the whole of the biodiversity on the earth is one biodiversity in that manner we have to treat one earth one future the theme of the g20 that was there also it is in line with the global biodiversity framework now it also talks about 30 cross 30 deal 30 30 cross 30 deal it means that we have to restore 30 percent of our area 30 percent of restoration should happen and 30 percent of sustainable management practices should be adopted by 2030 okay these kind of deals they often ask in the exam and say under the ages of which program it has been launched okay now here from point number one reducing the land and sea change to, to the point number nine management of wild species it is all about mitigating or reducing the impact of adverse climate change adverse biodiversity impact by the humans this is all about mitigation managing invasive species harvesting trade and wild species up to point number nine from 10 to 13 we will find that for the human requirements what are the human requirements for sustainable use of species like urban blue green spaces fair and equitable sharing of genetic resources what are the human requirements agriculture aquaculture fisheries restoring maintaining enhanced nature's contributions and most of the targets 14 to 23 these targets are basically focusing on the tools and techniques to achieve 
the mitigation and human requirements what are the tools and techniques like ensuring gender parity encourage and enable sustainable consumption choices sustainable consumption okay or circular economy reduce recycle and reuse zero wastage whether it be food other uh, otherwise it could be an industry also sustainably and progressively increase the level of financial resources we talk about climate financing 500 billion dollars commitment in the cop 28 that recently happened okay 500 billion dollars commitment per year strengthening capacity building and technical and scientific cooperation these have been the targets these are the 23 targets and th they can be classified like this basically uh, it's an umbrella concept over here and it is under global environment facility it is approved by uh, global environment facility at 64th council meeting which held in brazil this is important okay students you can join the current affairs crash course that is live right now recorded lectures you can get it has been organized subject wise organization is there sub topic wise organized in detail coverage very important topics will be dealt in detail and exhaustive coverage not just you know from the january 2023 to april 2024 but whatever is most important across 2 3 years you will be it will be covered in the uh, crash course moreover PYQs will be practiced in the class. Previous year questions and developing a knack to solve the previous year questions. Why the questions have been asked and why we are taking such topics which are highly probable. It is not that I am saying that's why it is highly probable but because from the trend of previous year questions particularly with the change to pattern of the UPSC from the last 10 years and from the recent previous 3 years what pattern has been changed accordingly we will be solving the PYQs. So you can join this course and the course will be conducted soon offline in Delhi and other centers as well. Thank you guys. Let's meet tomorrow.